Are you looking for the best Bluetooth headphones under $200? In this video, we will look at some of the 5 best headphones on the market. Before we get started with our video, we have included links in the description. So make sure you check those out to see which one is in your budget range. Number 1. Plantronics Backbeat Fit 6100. The Backbeat Fit 6100 headphones are a somewhat rare occurrence. The fitness market has recently been pushing wireless earbuds as the go-to for fitness fanatics. It makes sense. Waterproofing the earbuds are easier and cheaper. Earbuds are also easier to wear when you are exercising because of the firm fit in your ears. Plantronics managed to make a great pair of headphones that are perfectly fit for the gym. The IPX5 rating makes them sweat and splashproof. One of the most important features here due to their purpose. The memory foamer beds are covered in vinyl, which means you can easily just wipe them clean whenever needed. The headband is wrapped in a soft cloth that is very comfy, considering the strong force of the headphones clamping down on your head. The touch controls also had no issues registering our commands, even with sweaty hands. And the 40mm drivers have a lot of boosted bass, perfectly fit for the gym or EDM lovers. Just don't expect flagship quality or clarity here. AAC support is a nice addition, but there is no aptX for Android users. However, the microphone isn't great. It's not loud enough and de-emphasizes the low and lower mid frequencies to the point that any males with low voices will sound distant. But battery life is great at 24 hours on a full charge. Unfortunately, it charges over micro USB, so no fast charging. If you would like more info on these headphones, then please check out our in-depth Plantronics Backbeat Fit 6100 review. Number 2. Audio-Technica ADHM 50XBT Audio-Technica is well known among music lovers. This is mainly due to their great build quality and excellent sound. The ADHM 50XBT takes all of that and offers it in a convenient wireless package. Audio-Technica provides great sound over great features, which suites a lot of audiophiles. Having an easy-to-use, basic headset that sounds exceptional is better than getting a feature-rich set that sounds average at best. It's this mantra that allows these to be cheaper than most premium headsets, but sound equally as good. The headset has a metal skeleton for added durability, but the foamer pads are a little thin and small. This makes listening on these for more than 4 hours a little uncomfortable. The included carry pouch doesn't do much to protect the headset from a fall, but will help protect it in a bag full of other things that might scratch it. The controls on the headphone are physical buttons, much easier to use than touch gestures so many headphones are adopting. The sound on here is a bit more consumer-friendly than an audiophile would prefer, but it is easily adjustable with the app. There is some low-end boosting to give the bass and kick drums some extra oomph. In general, these offer superior clarity to most competing headphones and earbuds. There is also AAC and AppDex support, which is great for iOS and Android users who want high-quality streaming. Battery life is good. Listening with the volume at 50%, we got just over 30 hours of playback. However, they charge using a micro-USB, which isn't great. Number 3. Bose Soundlink On-Ear Headphones. Bose is one of the most well-known audio brands worldwide. However, the Soundlink on-ear headphones are quite a bit cheaper than their premium headphones like the QC35. It also trims off a lot of the extra features and has some slightly questionable build quality. The headphones are completely made of plastic, with analog buttons on the sides to control volume, playback, and Bluetooth. The frame and overall build don't feel cheap, but the ear cups feel like they might snap off with the slightest of tension. If you can look past the build quality, you'll find the comfort levels to be up to Bose's immensely high standards. The velvet padding is soft to the touch and feels great on your ears. The headset applies just enough pressure on your head, without ever becoming uncomfortable, even after hours of listening to music. This makes the headphones sound not only loud, but very powerful and clear. There is also no loss of clarity at higher volumes like some cheaper headphones suffer from. For on-ear headphones, the soundstage is also very good. There is more than enough room for all the different instruments to come through clearly. There is no aptX or AAC, but Bose does provide video streaming without any audio lag with Bluetooth. 
You can expect up to 15 hours on a single charge, which is a lot less than most of the headphones on this list. It's also a shame that Bose is still using the micro USB charging on these. It makes what is already poor battery performance even more sour. To find out more, check out our review of the Bose Soundlink on ear wireless headphones. Number 4. JBL E55 BT. The JBL E55 BT are just under $100, and it shows. The design is pretty simple and mostly plastic, for cost reasons, obviously. You do get to choose between five colors, which means there is most likely a color for everyone. The vinyl padding is quite thin, and you don't really feel it when you are wearing it. It doesn't clamp down too hard, but because of the big 50mm drivers and the lack of padding, the headphones become uncomfortable after about two hours of use. The three different buttons on the side are all the same size. This made distinguishing one from the others quite difficult. Therefore, changing the volume was always a guessing game. These headphones are very loud, even at 50%, they were too loud to listen to safely. The headphones form a decent seal, but the bass is boosted to the point it starts to mask the higher frequencies. It's not ideal for any sort of audio referencing, but it is a great consumer-friendly sound for lovers of bass. The excellent isolation also means that a lot of the low end stays put, which gives it an even stronger presence. This heavily bass-influenced sound might be exactly what you are looking for, and hey, good for you. It won't be impressing any audiophiles, though. There is also an audio-visual lag, almost one second, to be more precise. This is when the video plays before the audio reaches the headphones and then your ears. Aptex support would have easily fixed the problem. For now, you will need to use the included 3.5mm cable to watch movies perfectly in sync. The battery life on offer here is just under 20 hours on a full charge. The micro USB seems to be a common theme among the cheaper headphones, is discouraging, but these charge up quite fast. It takes 2 hours to fully charge the headset. Number 5. Sennheiser HD 4.50. The Sennheiser HD 4.50 isn't quite premium, but still costs a pretty penny, and it's one of the more expensive headphones on the list. It walks a fine line between the premium features and sound found on its more expensive counterparts and yet, still being affordable. The leatherette feels cheaper here, although the earpads are well padded and offer great comfort. The vinyl just gets hotter a little faster than some of the premium leather found on the more expensive models. However, the thick padding and leatherette do provide great isolation, and the headset clamps down just enough to provide optimal isolation and comfort. These are some of the cheapest noise-canceling headphones with the Sony WHCH710N and Philips noise-canceling headphones. They are much better than the Philips but are pretty much on par with the Sony's. Well, it lacks some depth and bass, especially when the noise-canceling mode is turned on. It's here where the Sennheiser seems to falter a bit. That doesn't mean it sounds bad, especially considering the great job the noise-canceling does, it's easy to look past losing a bit of audio quality at this price. However, they do have a slight edge over the Sony's when it comes to supported audio codecs. The Sony's support iOS devices with AAC. Great for Apple users, but it has no aptX for Android users. The Sennheiser is the exact opposite, with aptX for Android users, but no AAC. The battery is good, but nowhere near the Sony's with 20 hours of playback before we needed to recharge. It also features the outdated micro-USB, hooray!